In this video, we're going to take a look at the Luminar 4 library. We're going to look at the features that it has, and also we're going to take a look at how it compares to some other products to determine is Luminar 4 something that you should use as a standalone product or as a plugin for another tool. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a portrait photographer in Central Florida. I'm also the co-host of a photography podcast called I Like Your Picture. So I hope you'll check that out. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Also, I want to let you know, this is the last in a series that I've been working on of Luminar 4 tutorials. So we'll leave a card for you to check that out. There's also be in the end screen. And also, if you're interested in Luminar 4, you don't have it yet, there's a coupon code in the description and that'll save you $10 if you are interested in that or some of the other products, I'll leave a link to those in the description below. You can find some coupon codes that may help you out. With that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the Luminar 4 library. Okay, you can see that we're in the library. If you take a look up here in the upper right-hand corner, you'll find that there's three tabs. There's library, there's edit, and there's info. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the library tab, and that'll show you a number of shortcuts of albums that you've created and folders. We'll go over each of those. I also wanna point along the top bar. So you'll see there's a grid of photos here, which is why you see a grid right now. If you wanna zoom in on one, you can just click this large frame, and that'll show you a single photo that you're working on. So you can go back and forth between the grid and looking at a particular photo. Also, along the top over here, you'll see where it says small. That drop down will change the size of the grid or the photos that you see within the grid. So you can go from small, medium, large, and largest, just in case you need to get in and just look a little bit closer at some of your images. Typically, uh, when I've got a lot of things in there, I'll just go ahead and leave it on small. You can also use these plus or minus uh, buttons to zoom in or zoom out. And if you hover over it, you'll see there is a uh, keyboard shortcut. So in this case, I'm on a Mac, it would be Command Plus. I presume that would be Alt Plus or Control Plus on a Windows machine. So just hover over that and it'll tell you what the uh, option is. Over here, if you click the plus button, you'll see that you can add a folder with images. So in other words, if you need to import something, you can just go ahead and click the plus right there. You can also edit a single image without necessarily adding it to your library. Close that out. The search feature, will allow you to search for an image or folder, and that is only by name, date, and extension. So in other words, if you have some metadata that you want to search for, like what was taken with my favorite lens, unfortunately, that's not an option with the library in Luminar. And this button over here is the share button. So in other words, if you want to export your images, or if you want to send them off to some of these applications, and another option is you can't export them to other photo processing applications. So in this case, you can see Elements is grayed out. I don't have Elements on my machine since I already have the full version of Photoshop. But those are some of the applications you'll find. On a Windows machine, obviously, you wouldn't have the Apple Photos, so you may have some other options on Windows. All right, so let's go over here to the right-hand side. Shortcuts are exactly what they say. It's just a quick and easy way to get to all of your photos. And you can see whenever you have this little triangle, you can drop that down. It automatically creates date structure for your photographs. So I can come down here and see just which days that I had photos taken. And this is why I don't recommend creating these folders yourself. Most modern tools for photo management understand how to read the date out of your camera. If you keep the date correct and time correct in your camera, it will automatically sort these things for you inside of your uh, photo application, whether it's going to be Luminar or Lightroom or anything else that's taking care of it for you. It, it just simply reads the date off of the file itself. On this day, we'll show you for this particular day of the month. So I'm recording this in September. And on this day in September in 2016, I had 10 photos. And on 2010, I had five photos. So you can tell that this day in September is not really a very popular one for me. Your favorites are those that have this little heart down here. So if we go back up to all photos, And you can see I have this one selected. If I decided that there's another one that I wanted to choose, all I have to do is find a photo that I like. I can come over here and hover over it, and there's a little heart right there. You just tap on that. And now if you go to favorites, you see that I have two favorites. So that's simple. Recently added, you can see there's 80,800. Same as in my all photos library. And that will show you that you can tell that these are the dates that I've added photos. So apparently January 8th of 2020 was a big day for me to add a lot of photos in, into the library here. Recently edited is also handy. If you need to go back and find something like, where was that photo I was working on? 
click on recently edited and you'll see what's going on there. Now, the difference between albums and folders. Folders relate directly to the file structure on your computer, whether it's Windows or Mac. And so on a Mac, they have a pictures folder, and then I have several folders underneath that. If I delete one of these folders, it will delete it also on the folder on my operating system. So for example, if I were to get rid of uh, this Canva folder, I would no longer have Canva or the same Canva folder on my Mac operating system. Albums are different. Albums are virtual collections. Think of them like playlists on your music. You don't necessarily delete the files or they don't add into the files that are on your operating system. You simply create a virtual playlist. In this case, an album is the corresponding thing to the virtual playlist. Then you add the photos that you want. So these photos had nothing really to do with each other in the most case, maybe a couple of them, one or two did, but mostly it was just simply a collection that I found the photos that I wanted and I dragged them into this album. And that's really all it is to it. You delete the album or you remove a folder from the album, excuse me, you remove a photo from the album. It does not delete anything. Everything is a virtual. It is essentially a reference between this album name and the photographs that exist. So if I go ahead and decide that I don't want to get, or I don't want to keep this one anymore, I can hit delete. It's gone. But yet that photo is still on my hard drive. And if you take a look over here at trash, you notice that I did not add anything to my trash can to be emptied later on just by removing it from an album. Albums, unfortunately, do not stack. So if I go ahead and I want to create another album, it creates another album. I can call this one Demo 2. And let's see if I try to drag this over here. It'll put it on top. It'll put it on the bottom. But I can't have a hierarchy of albums. Each one is separate. So that gives you something to decide as far as how you're gonna name your albums and how you're gonna find them. It's unlike folders. If I come over here, you see I have this little drop down. I can have folders underneath folders, underneath folders, and so on. But those are things that are represented on my operating system level. So it simply mirrors. If I delete something on my desktop that was in here, when I come back in here, it's gonna be gone. Same thing, vice versa. If I delete it here, it's no longer gonna be available on my computer. Albums, however, are simply one album at a time, no hierarchy, no structure. All right, the other thing I wanted to point out were these two items up here, showing and by, and we can see where it says capture time. So the first one showing is a filter. And you can see that you can show all photos, you can only show your favorites, you can show ones that are rejected and unmarked and so forth. And then of course there are star ratings and color ratings, and then you can see which photos that you've edited. So that is a filter. It will allow you to show all or a limited subset of your photos. The next one is a sort filter. So we're sorting by capture time and you can see at the bottom it says by ascending or descending. Or you can choose the time that you edited the photo when you made the ratings and, and so forth. So you can basically sort by color label and rating, even file size. So if you're looking for like the really big photos that maybe you need to get down, or if you have different types of photos. In my case, uh, there'll be some JPEGs here. There'll be some Photoshop files. There'll also be some RAW files from my Nikon and probably some from a Sony camera that I did a, a test with one time. So that's what you're looking at with the file type. If you need to find the photos that you shot with a particular camera and I'd said, show me my photos from Sony, I can go ahead and filter those down by or sort them by file type and then find them from there. So that's just a quick way to take a look at what's in your library. All right, so that is a quick look at what the library can do for you. Now, the question is, should you use it? In my case, I don't use the library in Luminar 4. I love the program, but I use it as a plugin to Lightroom and Photoshop. The reason for that is that I was already using Lightroom and Aperture even before that. I've got a lot of features and capabilities in Lightroom to sort and manage by metadata. I can make uh, collections and then collection sets. So in other words, Collections are kind of roughly related to albums. They're virtual collections. But I can stack collection sets together. So if I want to have a collection set of portraits, then I can have my different portrait sessions as collections within a collection set. So it's another form of organization. There is a great deal of metadata in your photographs that unfortunately Luminar just simply does not allow you to access. I can find that and I can sort by that and query by that within a Lightroom. So I've decided that it is best for me 
to use Lightroom to manage my photographs and then use Luminar as a plugin so that I can access all the wonderful photo uh, editing techniques and, and tools that are inside of it. There are times when you may not want to use or when you may not want to use Lightroom or a tool like that because some people do not want to have that monthly payment to Adobe for the privilege of using that software. This is a rudimentary uh, photo management program, but it does work. And if you don't want to have that additional payment, then that's a good time to use this. If you're on a Mac and you have Apple Photos that's included with the operating system, I would probably actually consider using that as a file management system before using this one. The reason is both Apple Photos and Lightroom have mobile counterparts and they can sync your photos to the cloud. There is no cloud sync or mobile counterpart for Luminar at this time. I don't know if that's on the roadmap in the future. I've heard no mention of it, so I'm not going to try and get your hopes up. But the idea with Luminar's library is it's there and it's rudimentary and it works, but it doesn't have a lot of the advanced features that you can find either in Apple Photos with, for example, like the face detection that's available there or also available within Lightroom. I plan on continuing to use Lightroom and Photoshop in my post-processing. So therefore, I'm going to continue paying for it. Matter of fact, I pay for the entire Adobe Creative Cloud suite because I use other tools for editing of video and audio and so forth. If you're already invested and satisfied with uh, Lightroom or another tool, it's working for you. I would say stay with it. I would not switch from a more powerful tool down to this tool unless you're looking for a cost savings or you really want to simplify everything you have into one tool. As I mentioned, this is the last in a series of tutorials on Luminar 4. I hope it's been helpful to you. Uh, please, if you haven't seen the others, go ahead and take a look at the other videos in the playlist. And if it's useful to you, do you think someone else might appreciate this? Go ahead and share this video with them. Also, I have a question for you. Please let me know in the comments below. If you plan on using the library in Luminar, or if you're planning on using another tool, I'd love to have your feedback and know which one works for you. And please tell me why, because that might help me decide what other videos I can create and share for you that might give you a little bit of help. So let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, if it's been helpful to you, I'd appreciate it if you'd go ahead and click the like button. And I plan on coming out with more videos on Luminar and other photography topics. So please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified next time a video comes out. Thanks so much. We'll see you again next time.